Um, I wanted to bring up test-driven development again. I do believe this is a topic that a lot of people don't, either don't understand or they very much dislike. And there's another group of people who are like very dogmatic about you should always use TDD. And I wanted to kind of explain, first of all, what exactly is TDD and when you should potentially use it. So test-driven development is basically the idea that before you start writing out the implementation to whatever feature or bug fix you're trying to do, you write a test that verifies that you basically are going to implement the correct thing. Um, sounds kind of confusing, but let's just take it a step back a little bit. Like, let's say you're working on this, whatever page this is, and there's a button and you click this button and it needs to do something. But you got a bug report saying that, hey, when people actually click this button and they fill out the contact form, I'm not getting emails. So something is not happening that's supposed to be happening with the code. Test-driven development is basically before you start diving into the implementation of the button and start looking into the back and endpoint that this button might call and trying to figure out why is it not sending emails, you start writing some form of test. It could be an integration test. It could be a unit test. It could be an end-to-end -end test or something. It depends on how important this piece of functionality is. In this case, I would say this needs to be like an end-to-end -end test and an integration test because if you're running a business and people can't contact you, this is a very key piece of your application. So I would probably even start with like a Cypress test that says, okay, I need to load up the UI. I need to click this button. I need to fill out whatever form that I need. And when I click submit, I should verify that emails are sent out somehow. So sometimes writing tests is a lot easier said than done. So in this scenario, how do you verify that emails are sent out? You could have this be an actual like end to end where you go and this will send out an email to like some type of mock email service you have to go log into the email service and verify that the email was received. Um, there's different ways you can kind of test with emails. But if that's too difficult to do and you don't want to spend too much time trying to figure that out, you can step down and you can do like an integration test. So somewhere in your code base, there's logic that happens when you call this, this button, right? You can use like React testing library or view testing library. Something needs to click this button and this button needs to hit your API. And what you can do is you can actually mock out the function that tries to send out the email. And instead in your test, you could say like expect this send email function to be invoked with certain types of criteria, right? Make sure it has the correct subject, make sure it has the correct address. So that's kind of an overview of like how you can apply TDD to a bug. And there's like this whole diagram that people try to say you should follow where basically you first write a failing test. So that would be the failing test that we write. You have a test that clicks a button and then it verifies that an email is sent somehow. And then you make the test pass. So this is the part where you actually get to go in and you start adding the implementation. So you go into the back end, you find the logic that's trying to send out the email and you try to fix it. There's obviously a bug somewhere. You got to go and debug it, add console logs. And finally, at some point when you get it working, you can run your tests and your tests should all pass. And then the third step of this process is refactor the code. Okay. So now that you have a test that verifies the entire flow of you know, allowing users to enter in a contact form, you have more opportunities to go and refactor that code because it's fully tested or it's tested better than it was before. So this is kind of the process and you can keep on doing this. You could keep on adding more failing tests, get those tests to pass and then refactor it more if you wanted to. And that's just a scenario for a bug. But I do want to talk about the, you know, the parts of TDD that people don't really understand is that TDD, in my opinion, is a tool. It's a tool that you could potentially use to help you write better software and help you solve the problem. And where it really shines is if you are given the requirements at the beginning of your user story or at the beginning of your task, someone comes and say, hey, we need a UI that has these buttons. These buttons need to do these things when you click them. The backend needs to do this type of stuff when you invoke the backend API. So if you have those requirements or specifications up front, TDD becomes very easy because now you have business logic that's basically written out in, you know, text form, and you can translate that into tests before you even start touching your code base. So the things that I have found TDD really useful for is if you're going into an existing code base and you need to add in some functionality. Okay. So let's, again, let's just keep talking about this contact button. Let's say a, a business requirement comes in and says, Hey, you know, also when you send out an email, what we also want to do is we want to generate a PDF. We want to save that to somewhere like S3. And then we want to be able to open that PDF that has information about that contact person on another page that lists out all the PDFs. 
So in my opinion, that's a good example when TDD can be used for adding functionality, right? You already have all the code that's already there, and all you need to do is come into the functions that need to kind of extend the functionality, right? So I'm assuming in the back end you have an API endpoint for what happens when someone sends you the contact information, right? So you just have to go into the existing test and add a couple of more tests, right? You probably just add a test to verify that, hey, when this API endpoint runs, there's a PDF put in S3, and there's a way to kind of query a list and get all the PDFs that were created. And these are things that I've actually done at work, right? We, we tend to try to do TDD as often as possible. And a lot of the times you're just adding and extending the functionality of existing code. You're not always adding brand new UIs or brand new features all the time, right? Sometimes you do, but most of the time it's just extending what's already there, which usually already have a, has a test suite, which you can go in and just add additional checks and expect statements and then implement the actual logic to make those tests pass. But I do want to drive home the fact that this isn't perfect. Like TDD is not a perfect solution that you can use all the time. There's some scenarios where you actually want to experiment. L let's say that you're working on a page and there's not really good requirements that are passed down to you from you know, your product owner or from your business. And it's more of like, I need to experiment adding some type of page. Maybe you have to like add some charts or add some tables and some buttons. And you don't really have a clear vision of like, what exactly does this page need to do? Right, technically you could still use TDD to implement that page, but I find that if you're doing a lot of rapid prototyping or experimentation with your code, often coming back and adding the test later after you've verified all your code's working fine is actually a better approach. So the people who try to make like TDD sound like it's the gold standard of like writing quality software, um, I think they're kind of disconnected from like how many of us actually think. A lot of us like to tinker with the code make sure we can kind of get it working. And then once it's good and we verified it manually, we come back and just kind of solidify the functionality with some type of unit test or integration test, right? You can kind of read through this and there's just like a bunch of, you know, buzzwords about like TDD and how it helps you out. But ultimately I would just say, it's just another tool you can try to use to write high, higher quality software. And if you feel like the tool is not working for what you're trying to do, then you can always fall back on testing after you write the code. I, I don't like taking dogmatic approaches to things. And I think a lot of people who, for TDD have a very dogmatic um, mindset. So I mean, I'll try to think of one more. Like imagine that you're writing software for um, classrooms and you have the ability for teachers to come in and manage classrooms, add students, remove students, grade papers, whatever. Let's say down the road, there's a business requirement that comes in that says once the class starts, you can no longer add students, okay? And assuming you already have an application where teachers can come in and just kind of add students to the classroom, or a student can come in and add themselves to a classroom, TDD would be a good approach here because you have all the existing functionality in play, but business has decided that, hey, we actually wanna prevent people from registering to classes that have already started. So doing a TDD mindset, you could simply go into the API endpoints or maybe even the business models that prevent adding students when the classroom has started. So I'm assuming there's like a, a classroom business model or business entity that probably has a Boolean or a, a date that says like starting at or start at. If the classroom.startat is less than or equal to date.now, then do not allow people to call a method classroom.addStudent, right? You can go in, you can add that test first using a TDD approach, and then you can come in and add the functionality to verify that now no one can ever add students to a classroom that has been started. All right, let's, I mean, let's just do some pseudocode so that kind of, that last point kind of rings home. I could say like, should not allow students to be added to started classrooms, okay? Now I'm gonna use like a jest approach here, but this is assuming you have like a, 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 a classroom business entity, right? So I could say cons classroom is equal to new classroom. Um, and then I could also just say that the start time is, I don't know, we'll just put like a random date here. This is the day. Okay, so again, you're assuming that there's a, a business entity called classroom. It has some type of start time that's inside of its properties and doing some type of object oriented approach. We could try to do like make a student and we're gonna say classroom.add student. 
Okay. Now the test is supposed to verify that if you try to do this, maybe we could say that this thing, again, this is pseudocode. I, I can't remember off the top of my head how the proper way to write just. Um, I think it's like rejects to throw. Um, <clears throat> classroom has already started. Okay, so this is like the TDD approach. Again, this is pseudocode and there's errors all over my page because I don't actually have these things implemented. But the idea is like the business requirements came in. They're very clear business requirements. I can write a test that verifies that my existing classroom object cannot accept new students if this date, the start date of the classroom is greater than today. Okay, and then if you can take this a step further, because obviously this classroom object probably requires some type of date. Typically you have to do like a jest.mock or something. And then you have to spy on like the date object and you have to like overwrite what happens when this thing tries to verify and validate that, hey, when you add a student, that, you know, it allows it to happen. And I don't know if I'm just making this super confusing talking about this. I probably am. But the idea I'm trying to drive home is that TDD can really help you verify the functionality before you write the functionality. And this is something that we try to do as much as possible on the project I work on at work. And I find it really beneficial, especially if you start getting kind of lost and you're kind of confused. And the business logic could be even more complex than this. This is just a simple scenario painted out for you. But it could be, in some cases, you can actually add a student to a classroom if there's like a manual override true flag on it. Or if the person trying to add the student has a particular role. Let's say you want to have this add function also taken a teacher. And this add function checks the role of the user. And if the role is an admin or an administrator, then it'll overwrite and allow it to work. So again, like there could be more business criteria that come in. So should allow students to be added by admins even after the class has started. Okay. So let's say it's the same scenario. We're trying to add a student, but this this function is actually being invoked by a user who has a particular role. So if I said like role admin here, then in this case, we should resolve and allow this thing to, um, to basically work. In fact, I don't have to do this expect stuff. I could just do this um, and I could say, I don't know, I could just after this, I could say expect classroom, expect classroom dot has student, student to be true, okay? So again, this is just to drive the point home that like, as your business requirements get more complex, which they will, like I guarantee you these things will get more complex over time and they will continue to build upon old business logic. And you might end up having like 20 of these it statements for different scenarios. This is where like test driven development really starts to shine because wrapping and keeping track of all this business logic in your head is just, it becomes impossible at some point. There's just too many business rules. You have classrooms, you have students, you have like different users with different roles. Some roles have access to do this. Some roles do not have access to do this. Um, some, some classrooms might have criteria that have like, I don't know, like a max length. So let's say there's like a max students Boolean here. That's like 30. You'd have to add another test to verify that, Hey, if the max students is at the max, then you cannot, even if there's a role of admin, you cannot allow a student to be added to this classroom. I don't know if I'm driving this point home, but this stuff can get really complex really fast. And the only way I can personally understand how to like make sure your code is working the way that you need it to, to match these business requirements is to write a bunch of tests and writing the test before you start jumping into the code and start changing stuff and breaking everything. It, it, it just makes sense to me. TDD just makes sense to me in a lot of different scenarios. So I just wanted to kind of have a talk about TDD. A lot of people say it's stupid and they like to bash it. And I just don't think it's true. I think, again, it's just a tool. And if you can identify when you can use TDD to really help optimize you writing the code, then I think you should try to reach and use it um, from the get-go. But if there's a different scenario where, again, like you're doing a rapid prototype or experimentation, then yeah, maybe you don't have to be dogmatic about always grabbing TDD. You can just experiment, play with the code, refactor, move stuff around, and at some point come back and just add tests to verify what you did. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this little talk, uh, let me know. Comment, subscribe, uh, press the bell icon, um, press a like. And like always, I have a Discord channel. If you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to hang out with some other developers, the Discord is in the description of the video below. Uh, looking forward to see you all join. Have a good day and happy coding.